your time is valuable, so let's get moving through this. This video is designed to show how to use Python to download data from the Investor Exchange API. It's associated with the Jupyter Notebook. And so if you are not in Econ 136 and you don't know where that Jupyter Notebook is, then go to this link right here. That'll bring you to a page that looks something like this at the top. On that page, there's a segment labeled Jupyter Notebooks. And there, although the entries may be a little different than what I'm showing in this video, there will be at least one entry that shows IEX Data API Guide, and that's the one you want to find. That's the Jupyter Notebook that uses the example for the API. It should bring up a file that looks something like this. Now, before we go any further, I want to give thanks to someone named Rami Nasser because he put the original form of this program on his LinkedIn site and published it on Reddit. He's the kind of guy that likes to do that, shows people how to use Python and finance, and I would not have found this had I not read his article. So thanks to Rami Nasser for uh, contributing in the way that you have my Python file. Here's a modification of his. What really matters is this segment right here, IEX stores their data as JSON files, and those are easily handled by pandas, and so we have this reading into a pandas data frame. You will note here that it appears to be reading in a chart of some kind. It's loading in data that you would use to uh, create a chart, and all that matters is the signifier at the end, 5y, which tells us that that would be five years of data, and you have the option of using five years, or two year, or one year, and more options beside that. So in this example, we're simply loading five years of data. You want to go to both of these links here probably to see a little bit more about what is offered by IEX. It's very impressive. You have enough information here to simply download the data you need if you want five years of data. But you may find it in your interest to go to the website itself using these two links, either one of them really, to see what IEX has to offer. And I'm going to say a little bit more about that in this video. If you click on the first link, the link that's on the left, that'll take you to this developer platform. And it'll have somewhere on that these links. So click on the link that tells you to read the documentation. And on the left side of the screen, a menu should pop up with these references here. And on that menu, choose stocks. And that'll bring up a screen that has another index on the upper left. And on that index, later on, you may want to go to take a look at what they offer in the way of dividends and earnings. There's a lot of historical data here that's very useful. Like we do earnings report strangles, for example, and they have four years of earnings report for every stock they have listed here, including the dates, which is useful to us. What we want to look at, though, today is the chart. And again, it's not actually charts. It's data that you would use to draw a chart. And if you click on that link, That'll take you to a page that has some information about the HTTP requests you can use. And so when you look at this, you can see we're using the chart for five years, a second from the top. But you see you also have other options, two year, one year, year to date, six month, three month, and so forth. But again, it doesn't download a chart. It downloads a JSON file, or it gives you access to a JSON file that is formatted much like a Python dictionary and, be, and can be used like a Python dictionary where you have a keyword and a keyword value associated with each entry. And here, for example, are the range of commands you can use if you're trying to download data for Apple. Now, if we go back to the original Python program that I'm using as the example, you can see here that it is reading this JSON file into a data frame, and the one that is choosing to read are the five years of data. And this means, of course, that I have an option of choosing or selecting or narrowing down all of this information to one, two, or three that I might want to use. So, for example, at the bottom, 
of the Python program that I set up for you, we first re-index the data for the date, which you should do with the pandas data frame, and then we isolate the file to two keywords. In this case, I want to use volume and close. I could have used any one of those, but I'm using volume and close. And then here I'm showing the printout of the first four observations for just volume and close. So this enables you to pull down any mix of data from this historical material that you want into your data frame. And then after that, you can do with the data as you please.